In the past, people forgot passwords to important things, got locked out of their homes and cars, or left their wallets and IDs at home by mistake. But now, a radical body modification makes sure this never happens again. No, no, we're not talking about sci-fi. In 1998, a researcher got the first implant of a chip inside the human body. And ever since then, people have been enhancing their body with electronics. And as you raise your hand, you notice something strange about your implant that scares you. People can implant data chips called near-field communication chips or radio frequency IDs into their skin. These chips are already used in ID badges and fobs that unlock doors, credit cards, and can microchip pets with ID information. In February 2018, a 26-year-old Swiss man traveled to the Netherlands to have a chip implanted in his middle finger. He already had one chip placed near his knuckles several months ago. The man described the place where he got the implantation as clean and sterile, and his chip was disinfected before the implantation. He watched the quick and simple procedure happen, got stitched up, and was on his merry way. But not long after that, things started to go downhill. Before we get into that, I'd like to tell you about a much more ancient body modification and our modern way of using it. Thanks to this video's sponsor, Scentbird, a fragrance subscription service, you can test out colognes and perfumes from over 600 brands in just one click. Technically, a nice scent is a body mod. Pick a new fragrance to try each month and find tons of new fragrances that fit your personal style. You can even skip a month if the scents don't speak to you. Scentbird offers top designer brands like Tom Ford, Prada, and Versace, but also carry indie labels like Confession of a Rebel and Skylar. Scentbird will customize your scents based on previous purchases and a short quiz on their website. One way or another, you'll find a smell you love. This month, we received Veronique Gabay's Eau de la Nuit. It's a beautiful mix of woodsy scents that linger on the skin. You can even apply it as a layer on top of other fragrances to enhance the mystery history of multiple scents. We also got Om Intenso from Vince Camuto, with extra intensity driven by clear notes of armoise and ginger, bringing a little spice to your life. Lastly, we received Modern Gentleman by Joseph Aboud. With bright flavors of herbs, florals, and a base of woody musks, it creates a gorgeous blend of aromas that'll dance in your nostrils. With Scentbird, you get a 30-day supply to test out fragrances before you commit for only $17, so you don't have to spend money on entire bottles you won't ever finish. Scentbird fragrances also come in sleek small batch bottles that are both colorful and stylish. So you can look cool and smell enchanting. Full bottles of perfume can cost upwards of $150, but with our Scentbird discount, you can get luxury scents for just $7. Use our coupon code BREW to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. The man noticed a clear fluid leaking from the wound. Despite him changing his bandages every day and eventually removing the stitches as he healed, he was able to use his hand perfectly normally. But three months after the implantation, the clear liquid was still oozing out of him. And suddenly, things got even worse. The man's hand turned red and started swelling painfully. He rushed to the emergency room, where doctors noted that the wound was inflamed and would secrete fluid if pushed. The man's body had reacted reacted to the foreign object, leading to a staph infection. After the patient's infection was treated, the implant was surgically removed from his hand. He then healed for a week before undergoing physical therapy to restore his finger movement. Thankfully, it didn't take too long for the patient to have a full recovery, with no signs of chronic infection. An infection isn't exactly the cool, futuristic outcome people hope for when they get a microchip implant. Biohacks like NFC and RFID chips come with risks, and people should be aware of the dangers of getting one. One biohacking microchip retailer is literally called Dangerous Things. And even if the implantation procedure goes well, there are still other things that can go wrong afterwards. In our second case, a man named Daniel Oberhaus was inspired to get an NFC chip implant while he was attending a large hacker convention. The popular NFC booth was run by Dangerous Things, and Dan had stopped by a few times out of curiosity. 
But there was always a long wait for a microchip. Near the end of the conference, Dan got an update that there were only a few chips left. He had been drinking and impulsively decided to go for it. When Dan arrived, he was just in time to grab the very last implant. It felt like it was meant to be, so he paid $50 for them to insert the NFC chip into his hand. This implant did not become infected, but Daniel faced a different, frustrating problem. The chip was useless. At the implant station, the staff encouraged Daniel to secure his chip with a four-digit pin. When NFC chips are not protected, anyone with a reader can write to the chip in close range. To make sure he didn't forget the passcode, Daniel chose the same pin he used for his phone, or so he thought. The implantation itself is a simple procedure. The chip, or ID, fits into a small glass capsule the size of a grain of rice, which is sterilized before implantation. The capsule then goes into an injector and is placed between skin layers in just a few seconds, and is less painful than some muscle injections. The capsule is often placed in the hand and is barely noticeable. If you know where to push, you can feel it. Once it's inside, you can control what utility you're looking for with the implant. RFIDs and NFC chips can store store things like passwords, contact information, and even a picture. These devices rely on an external electronic source to communicate information to devices, like a scanner that unlocks certain doors in a hospital after an ID badge is scanned. The reading device creates a weak electric current and small magnetic field, so the implant doesn't need its own charge or any kind of battery. When the chip enters the reader's magnetic field, a small coil inside it uses the energy from the reader to produce its own magnetic field and transfers the data to the reader. Most modern smartphones can read these implants, so it's easy for many people to use them. Body modification in humans have an ancient history, with piercings, tattoos, and scarification dating back thousands of years and often having deep significance. The Celts, ancient Egyptians, and Polynesians are just some societies that gave spiritual meaning to tattoos. Ancient Aztecs, Mayans, and some Native American tribes historically practiced piercings, often for religious purposes. As technology advanced, more types of body modification became trends like new styles of tattoos, piercings, plastic surgery, and skin implants. Many body implants are medical and are made to replace missing body parts, deliver medication, monitor body functions, or support the organs. Eventually, people started doing it cosmetically, with results like small horns, shapes like hearts or stars, or even magnets under the skin to attract small metal items. With these implants, you can have technology at your literal fingertips. My left hand is my technology hand. I have two different transponders right here. There's an RFID and an NFC transponder. And in my left ring finger, I have a magnet implant for magnetic vision. I use my RFID and NFC transponders for many different security purposes, as well as storing information. And then I scan my chip and it unlocks just like that. Many people already microchip their pets with ID information in case they get lost. It wasn't long before the idea to chip ourselves became implanted in our minds. Which brings us back to Daniel. When he woke up the morning after the procedure, Daniel tried to unlock his chip, but the pin didn't work. He couldn't remember the passcode he'd selected and desperately typed in every possibility he could think of, but couldn't unlock his own hand. Daniel never even got to settle on a use for his chip. He tried NFC readers on several different phones and NFC devices, but nothing worked. He accepted his fate and forgot about the failed biohack for the next year. The hacking convention was coming up again, reminding Daniel about his experience and inspiring him to finally unlock his NFC chip. He posted online on the Dangerous Things forum and actually got a response from its founder, Amal Grafstra. Amal said that a third-party NFC app had likely been used to set the password. Any third-party app can read an NFC chip, but only the first one, the one someone uses to set the pin, can ever actually change the chip settings. Dan cycled through different apps and pin combinations, hoping to land on the right one. He was about to give up when he tried one last password, and it worked. The chip in his hand was finally unlocked. It felt very strange to have access to his NFC chip for the first time after having lived with it for so long. He still hadn't decided what he should do with the chip, but was just relieved to be able to do anything at all. 
For over a year, Daniel hadn't been able to do anything with his microchip biohack, and he wasted a lot of time and energy just trying to access his NFC chip. So much for ease and convenience. Some of you might have already come across NFC technology if you're familiar with Nintendo Amiibos. These little figurines have NFC chips in them, and once you scan them with a Nintendo device with NFC capabilities, you unlock new characters and content in games. Animal Crossing also has Amiibo cards that let you do things like call villagers into your game, decorate their homes, and assign them jobs. My favorite villager is Biff. He's a sporty red hippo with a great attitude. He is my very best friend. <sighs> RFIDs and NFC chips can be used as wallets, passports, keys, and in creative ways such as digital tattoos or even gun safety, making sure only the owners of a certain gun is able to fire it. People are already using these implants in their daily lives. Burgundy Waller I call myself Chip Girl. got her name for having RFID implants to open the doors in her home. In some countries like Korea and China, smart home trends like this are popular, where things like heating, lighting, security, and entertainment are automated and sometimes controlled remotely via the power of the internet. There are plenty of uses for NFCs and RFIDs outside of the home too. We're already using this technology every day. We have chips and fobs and IDs to unlock into apartment buildings or hospital wings, in bank cards that can be tapped on a payment machine, and in phones with Apple Pay and Google Pay apps. Just imagine tapping your hand instead of your phone or card. Patrick Powman, a security guard from the Netherlands, does exactly that. He makes daily purchases with his chip implant. Instead of putting his credit card against contact tactless card readers, he simply raises his hand to the device to be scanned. Patrick got his implant from Walletmore, a British-Polish firm that is the first company to publicly offer implantable payment chips. In another case, Andreas Schustrom, a VP at a technology consulting company, used a chip in his hand to board his plane at Stockholm Arlanda Airport. Instead of showing his physical passport and boarding pass, his information was stored inside a glass capsule in his hand. If this becomes the norm, you won't have to worry about your passport passport being lost or stolen ever again. Unless, of course, you somehow misplace your hand or someone steals it. For safety, border security still needs to see an actual passport when people travel internationally. Between these two uses, you wouldn't even need to carry a wallet around anymore. A more unconventional idea for NFC chips is gun safety. Lodestar is a company that created a smart gun that can only be fired by verified users. The founder, Gareth Glasser, made the company after hearing too many stories about children who got hurt while playing with unattended firearms. The gun has three verification methods, a fingerprint reader, a pin pad, and an NFC chip that is paired to a smartphone app. Users have their choice of which method is the primary verification method. Smart Guns is another gun company whose guns are secured by radio frequency identification using an RFID chip located in a glove that the user wears. Its products are for people who carry guns on their job. The first push for Smart Guns was in 1999. For the very first time, a gun manufacturer has committed to fundamentally change the way guns are designed and will develop smart guns that can be fired only by the adults who own them. In response, the NRA sponsored a boycott asserting that these safety measures would open the door to stricter gun laws. Another hindrance to this idea taking off is that it already had disastrous results before. German company Armatix sold a smart pistol in 2014. But a hacker found a way to fire it when it was meant to be locked, and also prevented it from firing by jamming the frequency the gun operated on. So while this technology has great potential, it's a bit too new to be totally foolproof. There are so many possible uses for NFC chips and people get pretty creative with their ideas. It can even be something as simple as a picture. Artist Anthony Antonelli's got what he called the world's first digital tattoo. When he decided to get an RFID chip in his hand, that contained one of his custom gifts. So, like a tattoo in the sense that it's a body modification to display art, but you need a smartphone to see it. Some other ideas are far less innocent and have more of a, you know, b oh, what's the word? Dystopian robot future vibe? 
Ionic Ear is an idea that was popularized on an episode of the business pitch series Shark Tank. Founder Darren Johnson pitched a Bluetooth-enabled device that would be implanted beneath the ear canal. The idea was that the Ionic Ear would remove the need for headphones. The idea wasn't picked up by any of the sharks and the company died out, but it reveals another interesting possible utility for chip implants. Another company, Neuralink, is a famous Elon Musk project. Or at least I'm told he's famous. Neuralink's goal is to develop a device implanted in the human brain and allows computers to translate that person's thoughts into actions like typing, pressing buttons, and using a mouse. This idea has tons of potential for assistive technology, as it would make it very convenient for people with limited dexterity or motor control to use computers. At the moment, popular assistive technology includes eye tracking software, sip and puff switches that allow computer control through breaths of air, foot switches, head pointers, and keyboards with raised areas between the keys. All of these devices could potentially be replaced with Neuralink. By just thinking about the result you want, the computer will complete the behavior. A viral video in 2021 from Neuralink shows a monkey playing the classic computer game Pong with only its mind, not using any external controllers. Neuralink is allegedly expected to begin human trials in the next year. But with such an ambitious project, it's unknown how long the path will be before the goal becomes reality. The project has also had its share of controversy controversy, including concerns about animal cruelty and some animal deaths confirmed. The idea of getting chips in the brain immediately leads to a lot of concerns about security and privacy with microchips. Digital devices can be hacked, as seen with the German smart pistol. There's also the question of advancement. If chip technology improves and better versions are made, will people have to constantly remove and implant new chips to keep up? As always, people are concerned about invasiveness and privacy with technological advances. Could the chips be used as surveillance devices? And how easy is it to implant one without someone's knowledge? The risk of privacy invasion is not as bad as some may think, according to Hannes Sapiens, a microchip pioneer and biohack speaker. People would have to know you have a microchip and get very close to scan it, and there is far more personal data on your smartphone. Also, RFID chips can't be tracked since they don't give off signals and are considered passive devices. These implants also can't collect data. They are simply a place to store data that is actively put into them. As for injecting a microchip without being noticed, it would be quite difficult as it leaves a visible cut that needs to be treated and the capsule can be felt afterwards. But Michael Patterson, CEO of network security firm Plixer, raised concerns about privacy invasion and opportunities for criminals. He believes that people may be able to steal data from NFC chips if they are not secured properly, and that personal information can likely be accessed even if companies promise it is encrypted. The rise of NFC implants has led to a lot of exciting ideas, as well as valid concerns. Anyone considering an implant should balance the pros and cons of the implant, and make sure you follow safety steps to get the best usage you can. It's possible that we'll see a lot more inventive uses coming out with human chip implants or a rise in the popularity of implants that unlock doors and process payments. As for me, I'm not going anywhere near that. Thank you very much. I'll stay implant free. You hear that, Howard? You're not going to hack into my brain. Who says I haven't already, meatbag? Say psych right now. Say psych. Remember, use our code BREW to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird and test out fresh new scents today.